Historians believe there were more than 1,000 Native American civilizations before 1492. Today, there are only 574 in the U.S. Although Hollywood usually depicts the American Indian Wars as fights between Native Americans and cowboys on rolling plains, the real wars took place over a large time span. They are a violent story that showcases the exploitive nature of colonization and shows how people on both sides chose fear and suspicion over cooperation. The American Indian Wars began long before the United States was an independent country, lasting over 300 years. As the colonists arrived and the American people expanded west, they drove the Native Americans from their homeland, which they had had for thousands of years. These expansions and the battles with the Native people shaped the United States in ways we still explore today. The American Indian Wars are still relevant. Studying them allows us to learn more about who we are and how to grow in the future. What were the American Indian Wars? The American Indian Wars were not the first conflicts between European colonists and people in North America. Christopher Columbus dubbed the people suitable for conquest and slavery after arriving in the Bahamas in 1492 on accident. Once the other European countries heard about this discovery, they raced to claim their part of the New World. The Spanish established an early advantage but killed up to 8 million native people in the early years of colonization. American colonists used the tribal system against the Native Americans, forming alliances with some groups against others. The fighting gradually weakened the indigenous people, and the United States eventually forced them onto reservations, where many of their languages and culture were lost. The wars began in 1609. This was called the Beaver Wars. The Iroquois and Dutch fought against the Algonquins and the French over the fur trade around the Great Lakes in Canada. Most of the American Indian Wars before the American Revolution involved trade. The Native Americans wanted more land and trade opportunities to get European luxuries, like better weapons, and the European powers usually sided with their trading partner. The Iroquois initiated the Beaver Wars, attacking and conquering neighbor tribes to access their beaver populations. The problem was that the Iroquois tended to drive the beavers to extinction in each region in their quest for furs. The conflicts continued until 1701. The Anglo-Powhatan Wars began in 1609 between the English colonists in Jamestown and the Powhatans. The Powhatans were a group of tribes in the area. The people of Jamestown fell on hard times and believed taking Powhatan territory would help. After taking Pocahontas as prisoner, the Powhatans stopped raiding. But tensions flared again in 1622 with the Jamestown Massacre, which killed a quarter of the population in the colony. They thought the English would leave after such a defeat. The English launched guerrilla warfare and even poisoned the indigenous leaders with wine before killing them. The tribes in the area fell to the English, but they gathered together one more time in 1644. This time, the British ensured that the tribes would never rise again by either killing or deporting all men 11 years or older. They moved everyone else to the earliest reservations. There were many other wars before the American Revolution, such as King Philip's War, which solidified animosity between the colonists and Native Americans, and the Yamasee War, which saw many people leave North and South Carolina due to its violence between 1715 and 1770. Fighting continued into the American Revolution as the American colonists fought the British in the East and the Native Americans in the West. The colonists eventually succeeded, sending the Shawnee back to their original borders at the Mad Dog River and starting a turning point in American-Indian relations. The Americans turned their attention to the West, determined to expand regardless of the tribes already living there. The Northwest Indian War began in 1785 and ended in 1795. The Treaty of Paris split up Native American territory without consulting them, which made the tribes realize that the Americans and Europeans saw them as pawns, not equals. The remaining tribes in the Northwest declared an alliance, called the Western Confederacy, and stated the Ohio Territory was free from American control. Although the Native Americans were successful in the first part of the war, by 1793, the American forces were more powerful. They forced the Native people to acknowledge American control of the region and to move south and east. The Greater Ohio region was divided into modern Ohio and Indiana by 1800. The Americans were also fighting the Cherokee American Wars at this time. It started in 1776 and ended in 1794, but the tensions that led to it had begun long before.
with treaties being broken and colonists moving onto their territory. By 1776, the Cherokee had declared war. Although they were able to inflict a significant amount of damage on the Americans, their numbers dwindled over time, and they were too weak after the years of war to continue. After 1794, both sides had a period of peace, mainly because the indigenous people needed time to replenish their population. Several Americans in power, such as Thomas Jefferson, were firmly against them, so the Native Americans were pushed farther west until they rebelled in Tecumseh's War. The war occurred from 1810 to 1813 and involved the Shawnee tribe, which revolted against anti-Native American policies. Tecumseh's War became part of the War of 1812, but as the war between the United States and Britain slowed, the Native Americans pulled their allegiance away from Britain. One of the major wars in the early 1800s was the Seminole War, also called the Florida Wars. The Seminole people were the prominent Native Americans in Florida. However, it was under Spanish rule. The Americans marched on the Prospect Bluff Fort, which was used by the Seminole people as well as freed and fugitive enslaved people. The Americans attacked the fort to prevent a future uprising and to destroy a possible beacon of hope for change for enslaved people. After they destroyed the fort, settlers began moving into Florida, angering the Seminole people and starting the Seminole Wars in 1817. The Americans won a large portion of Florida from the Spanish in 1819 and later gained it all. They also came up with the idea of forcing Native Americans onto reservations to control them after confining the Seminole people to a central Florida reservation in 1823. However, the Seminole people did not go quietly, nor were they pleased with the lack of respect from the American government, which caused the Seminole Wars to continue. When Andrew Jackson became president, he was determined to deal with the Native Americans. In 1830, he signed the Indian Removal Act, allowing the United States to forcibly move tribes in the South to reservations in places like Oklahoma. This is known as the Trail of Tears. Groups like the Cherokee and the Seminole resisted, but both were eventually relocated. However, some of the Seminole people are still in Florida today. The American Indian War spread across North America as the United States continued to push west. By the end of the 1800s, even the Western indigenous people were forced onto reservations. There were several significant wars and battles in the latter half of the 1800s, but two of the most famous ones are the Battle of the Little Bighorn and the Wounded Knee Massacre. What happened in the Battle of the Little Bighorn? The Battle of the Little Bighorn was part of the Great Sioux War, fought between the United States and the Lakota and Cheyenne tribes over land in the Black Hills region of South Dakota. The land had been given to the tribes as their reservation, and they used it for hunting. Unfortunately, gold was found in the Black Hills, starting a gold rush that encroached on their land. The Native Americans were upset, and the war was on. George Custer led the Battle of the Little Bighorn. He was a controversial military man sent on a scouting mission. He had the 7th Cavalry Regiment with him, but they only had light artillery because Custer wanted to move quickly. When he stumbled across a Native American settlement, he attacked it, not realizing it was the headquarters for all the tribes involved in the battle. Custer also split his troops into three groups, intending to attack the village on three sides, capture women and children, and then force the Native American soldiers to surrender. However, two groups were pushed to Reno Hill, where they survived complete annihilation but could not assist Custer in his final stand. Custer's group had no survivors, so there are no accounts from the American perspective of the last few minutes of Custer's life. According to the Native American histories, Custer attempted to cross the river but was forced back, finally retreating to Custer Hill. The soldiers did not have swords for close combat, so the battle quickly became a complete disaster for them. Crazy Horse and his warriors broke through the skirmish line and won a sweeping victory. However, they killed every man, even those who surrendered, because the Sioux tribes did not take male prisoners. They even ritually disfigured the bodies. They believed this would doom the soldiers' spirits to walk the earth. These heinous acts created an intense backlash from the United States. The American government continued the Great Sioux War with renewed vigor, forcing many Native Americans out of the Black Hills. This battle turned American public opinion against all Native Americans, not only the Sioux tribes, and led to increased oppression for many years afterward. What happened at the Wounded Knee Massacre? After the Great Sioux War ended in 1877, the Lakota tribe was forced onto a small reservation where they resigned themselves to their fate. 
However, they soon heard about a new religious movement that translates as the Ghost Dance. It combined Christianity and Native American customs, calling on the Native Americans to shun violence and devote themselves to prayer in the form of a spirit dance. The Ghost Dance quickly spread to other indigenous tribes, which made the United States government leery. In the early 1890s, the Lakota people adopted it too, and the United States decided they had to deal with it. The first expedition into the reservations intended to capture Sitting Bull, one of the most famous Lakota leaders. He'd allowed his people to take up the new ghost dance movement, but when the reservation police tried to arrest him, Sitting Bull resisted and was shot. After his death, about 200 Lakota people fled to join Spotted Elk, another Sioux chief trying to get to Pine Ridge. They left on December 23rd, and the American military caught them on December 28th. They were taken to Wounded Knee Creek. The Americans discovered some weapons in the group, but they were mostly hunting rifles. As the discussion between the Lakota people and Colonel Forsyth became more argumentative, Yellowbird, a medicine man, began the ghost dance, which frightened the Americans. The soldiers conducted a second weapon search and found a gun with Black Coyote, a Lakota man who was deaf. He did not understand English and refused to give them his gun. A scuffle followed and a shot rang out. Suddenly, both groups were attacking each other, and within minutes, every Lakota person there was either dead or injured. There were 64 American casualties, many of those wounds from American weaponry. The Wounded Knee Massacre was a tragedy that was hushed up and is still not entirely taught today. It demonstrates the struggles and oppression the Native Americans had to live with during the American Indian Wars. These wars shaped American Indian relations. The U.S. government is still working through the consequences of it today, with a more transparent look at the past to help repair these relations moving forward. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the American Indian Wars, check out our book, The Indian Wars, A Captivating Guide to the American Indian Wars, Battle of Little Bighorn, and Wounded Knee Massacre. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.